Ahoy there, and welcome to Super Easy History. In this pirate-themed installment of our series, Five Fun Facts, we sail to the Caribbean in search of long-lost buried treasure. Once there, we'll join the crew of the terrifying Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard, and travel aboard his dreaded vessel, the Queen Anne's Revenge. Or, at the very least, we'll overhear some gold nuggets of pirate knowledge while face down in a barrel of rum. So, ready your shovels and remember that X always marks the spot, because these are five fun facts about Blackbeard and the golden age of piracy. Let's get right into the action with fact number one. The trigger for this golden age came in 1700, when King Charles II of Spain died without an heir, which resulted in the War of the Spanish Succession. To put a 13-year story short, Austria, Britain, and half of Spain got into a little bit of a spat with France and the other half of Spain over who should succeed Charles. The war concluded with a grandson of the French king being permitted to take the Spanish throne, but that's not what's particularly important to us. What is important is that over the course of the conflict, the navies of Britain, France, and Spain were duking it out all over the Caribbean. In addition to the official navies, privateers, who as the name suggests, were paid to go around killing and stealing from anyone flying a different flag to theirs, were active in the Caribbean. But suddenly, with the war over, thousands of these formerly employed armed men lost their legal if really immoral, sources of income, and turned instead to robbing merchant vessels. Number two. These pirates weren't exactly as we imagine them today. For one thing, pirates dressed and acted just like every other sailor of their day. They didn't all wear eye patches. They didn't all have peg legs and hook hands. And if we exclude Treasure Island's fictional Long John Silver, there's no proof of any of them ever going about their lives with a parrot on their shoulder. They also weren't the monsters, the moral vacuums that they're sometimes thought of as. Aboard pirate ships, a strict code was abided by that put nearly every decision to a vote by the crew. In fact, sailors on pirate ships were generally treated much better than their counterparts on other vessels. On land, pirates could be just as respectable. The infamous Captain Kidd, for example, owned a three-story home in New York City, and even donated a portion of his ill-gotten gains towards the construction of a church. Number three. A few pirates were a little more stereotypical. The most well-known of these is, of course, the feared Edward Teach, Blackbeard. Little is known about Blackbeard's early life, though we do know that he was born in England around the year 1680. During the War of the Spanish Succession, Blackbeard was a privateer operating out of the British colony of Jamaica, and like most of his brethren, he turned to piracy following the war's conclusion in 1714. Initially, Blackbeard served under another pirate, Captain Benjamin Hornigold, but when Hornigold retired from piracy in 1717, Blackbeard took over as the leader of their pirate band. It was at this time that Blackbeard, um, acquired his famous ship, she was originally a French slave trading vessel called La Concorde, but after making her his flagship, Blackbeard renamed her as the Queen Anne's Revenge. Number four. Blackbeard's whole persona was built around fear. From his large dark beard to the fuses he would light and attach to his hair, Blackbeard's main pirate weapon wasn't his ship or brutality. And he often avoided direct confrontation in favor of simply scaring his enemies into giving him what he wanted. The French sailors, for example, were allowed to live after surrendering to Blackbeard, and some even joined his crew. The rest were given one of Blackbeard's own sloops and allowed to continue on their way. His most brazen and successful use of fear came in the summer of 1718, when Blackbeard blockaded the port of Charleston, South Carolina, for nearly a week. What he demanded from the town, though, probably isn't what you would expect. Instead of gold, silver, and pearls, Blackbeard asked only for a chest of medicine with which he could treat ill members of his crew. When the demand was met, Blackbeard left Charleston in peace and released several hostages without harm. Number five. Despite his legendary status, Blackbeard's piracy didn't last all that long. After leaving Charleston, he sailed north aboard the Queen Anne's Revenge at the head of a small pirate fleet. But on the 10th of June, 1718, the Queen Anne's Revenge and another ship of Blackbeard's fleet ran aground on a sandbar off the coast of North Carolina and had to be abandoned. 
Roughly six months later, British troops sent by the governor of Virginia and under the command of Royal Navy Lieutenant Robert Maynard caught Blackbeard at Ocracoke Inlet on the 22nd of November, 1718. A vicious battle broke out between Blackbeard's crew and the soldiers, in which Blackbeard, fearsome as ever with his hair burning and terrifying beard on full display, went down under a hail of musket balls and several stab wounds. With the battle over, Maynard took Blackbeard's surviving crew prisoner and sailed back to Virginia, with the dead pirate's head on full display at the front of his ship. And those were five fun facts about history's most famous pirate. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to go down below, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and hit the like button. Or check out one of our other videos by clicking on a thumbnail to the left. Thank you for watching Super Easy History.